Hello, and welcome to Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information to help you understand and manage the technology in your home. If this isn't your first time here, welcome back. Today, we're talking about phishing attacks and spear phishing. What is a regular phishing attack? What is a spear phishing attack? And how you can spot both of them and protect yourself from falling for that scam. So first, a phishing attack is when the attacker is basically phishing for information. Now, they can do this through a number of means. So they send an email and it's a massive email and it's not very personalized. It says it's from PayPal, it says it's from Amazon, or it could even be a company you haven't even heard of and it's telling you you have an invoice. What it is is phishing for information from you. So they want you to click a link and enter your username and password so that they can get that information. They want you to call a phone number and hand over information over over the phone, or they want other types of information like your address and driver's license and social security number and things like that. So a phishing attack is something that is trying to get information from you. So let's go over a few of these like really common attacks. One of the biggest ones that I have talked about in the past is an invoice scam. So it sends you an invoice. There's no links in the invoice. There is nothing else in the email that you would click on or anything like that, but it has a phone number and it says, thank you for your payment of $1,000 for this TV or this iPhone or whatever, and or this subscription. So it'll be like a Norton subscription or a Best Buy subscription. And it wants you to call this phone number if there's any problems with this invoice. Well, you see this invoice, you see there's no links. You're like, okay, well, this isn't going to be a malicious attack. There's no links for me to click. What what do they want from me? And there's this phone number. And it makes you want to react right away because it's a lot of money and you want to resolve that because you don't want that much money taken out of your account. So you call the phone number. Well, what happens when you call the phone number is that's when they get information from you where they're like, oh, well, give me your credit card information so I can look this up. And then you're handing over your credit card information. So, or, you know, oh, let me see, like, like what is the bank account that it would be under? Let me look it up. And so they're doing that as under the guise of looking up your information, but really you're just handing over the information. So and then you also see this type of attack um, on the phone as well when they call and they say they're from the IRS, you owe a lot of taxes or something like that, and they're calling you, it's still a phishing attack. They still don't really know any specific details about you in particular. They're just doing the same attack on everybody using the same script. So that's a standard phishing attack. Now let's talk about spear phishing. And if you think about it, when you're fishing, you know, you've got your line out there and you're just waiting for people to bite, right? But if you're legitimately spear fishing, you are looking at the fish and you are attacking a specific fish. So here is the spear phishing attacks in technology. A spear phishing attack will use social engineering to perpetrate its attack. So let's talk about exactly what is social engineering because we need to define that in order to really understand spear phishing. So social engineering uses information that is publicly available to get information about you to use that in their attack. So let me give you an example. I have a LinkedIn profile. On my LinkedIn profile, it says who my boss is. It says who my coworkers are. If they look at the company itself and look at the employees of that company. So once they have that information and now they're ready to perpetrate their attack. So they create an email address that has your boss's name in it, like just a regular Gmail account or whatever. And then they'll send you an email at your work address from this boss's Gmail account. Now the boss says, 
hey, I'm in a meeting. I need you to take care of this right away. You know, so I don't have access to my personal account for whatever reason. Um, so, or I don't have access to my work account, which explains why they are writing this email from their Gmail account as opposed to their work email account. And they will say, I need you to go buy these gift cards so I can give this to these people that, it, er, that are in the meeting right now. So it's super urgent. I need you to take care of this right away. Um, I've already talked talked to so-and-so coworker, and they said that you can use the company card and take care of this. So you see this email from your boss. Again, it makes you want to react right away. It's got the name of your boss. It's got the name of your coworker. So you're not already seeing these red flags of, oh, this doesn't really sound accurate because you think, who's going to take the time to figure out who my boss is and who my coworkers are to perpetrate this attack on me. Why would they do that? That's how social engineering is used to perpetrate a spear phishing attack. So they use social engineering. They looked at my LinkedIn profile, saw who my boss was, saw who my coworkers were, and then started their spear phishing attack because it's a highly targeted attack on an individual instead of a just spray and pray kind of attack where I send the same email to thousands and thousands of people. This one, I can only send this same email to one person because that's the only person that it would affect. So another thing about social engineering is they can also use that to attack you even behind the scenes. So they look at your Facebook profile and you've filled out this questionnaire on your Facebook profile that has all of these different questions that you've answered. So it's a, oh, tell me about your senior year of high school. And it wants you to put in your high school and the year you graduated and the mascot and who you were dating and all of the, and who your friends were. All of these can be answers to security questions for a password reset. So they try and access your account and then now through social engineering, they have answers to these password reset questions. So that's another way they can use spear phishing without even targeting you specifically, like you don't know you've been targeted. They've just looked at your social profile and they are using the information that they have gathered through social engineering to perpetrate their spear phishing attack on you. Another example of a spear phishing attack is also via the telephone. Now this is a legitimate attack that happened to my grandmother. So my brother lives sort of near where my grandmother lives. My grandmother got a phone call claiming to be my brother saying that he was in jail and needed her to send money to bail him out of jail. But now my grandmother is super sweet, but she's very smart. So what she did is called my sister-in-law to see how Tim is doing. And the funny thing about that is as my sister-in-law was talking to my grandmother, you, she could tell that something was a little off, but my grandmother didn't want to sell out my brother to his wife. And so she was talking to her a little bit about like, oh, how's Tim doing? Okay, great. And so after they got off the phone, my sister-in-law called my brother and said, hey, call your grandma because something weird's going on. So my brother called her and they got that all squared away. But this was, again, a highly targeted attack. They knew who my brother was, knew my brother's name, knew that it was the grandson of my grandmother and used that information to try and extort money out of them. That is another way that spear, a spear phishing attack can be perpetrated. Regular phishing, they're just th throwing the line out there, hoping people bite. Spear phishing, highly targeted attack directed at an individual. Now, the return on investment for a spear phishing attack is so much higher because you're thinking, why would they take so much time to learn all of this information about me just to perpetrate this attack? The answer is that it's very lucrative for them. The amount of times they are successful with a spear phishing attack as opposed to a regular phishing attack is 
so much higher that yes, they are going to take the time to perpetrate these spear phishing attacks so that these attacks will be successful. So there you have it. That is the difference between phishing and spear phishing. Hope you enjoy this content. If you do, please give me a like and subscribe to this channel. I am Family Tech on all social media platforms, so go ahead and give me a follow over there and we will see you next time. Bye.